Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in gases, bam! So today we're talking about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. So the total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressures exerted by each of the gases in the mixture. Okay, so let's take a look at what this is. So this is the equation in which you will see the P total, that's the pressure total, is equal to the partial pressure of water, or any gas, plus the partial pressure of gas B, plus the partial pressure of gas C, plus the partial pressure of gas D, etc. If there's only two gases, you can only add two of them up. If there's only three, you add three of them up. If there's ten, you add them all up. Okay? So, when you see the words collected over water, then you know those are some key words right there that you know that you're going to be using Dalton's Law. Okay, so each gas in a mixture exerts a, a pressure, that is a partial pressure, that is independent of the other gra gases. Okay, so here's our example. We got 1.50 moles of hydrogen, a 0 .0, 0 0.500 moles of nitrogen, and one mole of helium is placed in one single container. That's the same container, giving an internal pressure of 1,587 millimeters of mercury. What is the partial pressure in millimeters of mercury of each individual gas? That is, what is the partial pressure of hydrogen gas? What is the partial pressure of nitrogen gas? And what is the partial pressure of the helium gas? So, I know the amount of each gas and I know the total pressure. So, I'm going to use that here. So PT, that's for the partial, for, sorry, PT is for the total pressure, is equal to the partial pressure of the hydrogen plus the partial pressure of the nitrogen plus the partial pressure of the helium. All right, so I've got the mole values of each of these and the total pressure right there is the total pressure. I've got the mole values of each of these times X. So 1.5 times X for hydrogen, 0.5 times x of nitrogen and 1 times x for helium. I'm going to sum these all up and that equals 3x. 1587 divided by 3 is equal to 1x. 1x is equal to the partial pressure of the helium and that is 529 millimeters of mercury. Then I'm going to take that um, value of x and then multiply it by 1.5 and I'm going to get the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas and that's 794 millimeters of mercury. Then I'm going to take that 529 which is the 1x and multiply it by 0.5 to get the partial pressure of the nitrogen gas and that's 265 millimeters of mercury. So as a check so these are the partial pressures of each of the gases, helium, hydrogen, nitrogen at 529, 794, and 265 millimeters of mercury, respectively. What I want to do is make sure that these do add up to what I expect. And that is the total pressure is the sum of all the individual pressures of the gases. Okay, using significant figures, Okay, um, this is going to be 1587 millimeters of mercury. That is my check. You should see that I got the 0.5s there highlighted. It's a little bit different because there is a significant figure issue, but it does add up to the correct value. So that would be your check to make sure you got your work correct. Okay, let's try another example here of Dalton's Law. What is the pressure in kilopascals if the gases in cylinders A, B, and C are all combined into cylinder X, assuming the same type of cylinder, i.e. a constant volume. So you can see cylinder A has 325 millimeters of mercury, cylinder B has 1.23 atmospheres, cylinder C has 2.67 bar. And I'm gonna combine all of these gases into cylinder X, okay? All right, so um, the total pressure is equal to the sum of the, all the individual gases. So that's pressure of gas A, pressure of gas B, pressure of gas C. I'm going to add these up. But in order for me to add up these pressures, these partial pressures, to get the total pressure, I need to have the units in the same set of units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert all of these into kilopascals because if you read the question, it says, what is the pressure in kilopascals? So I'm going to convert each of these into kilopascals. This is a good activity for you to do your unit conversions of pressures. 
So I'm going to convert the 325 millimeters of mercury into kilopascals. I've got the 760 millimeters of mercury, the 101.325 kilopascals. That's 43.3 kilopascals for cylinder A. Now, cylinder B is 1.23 atmospheres. I'm going to convert that into kilopascals. The conversion is one atmosphere of 101.325 kilopascals. That will be 125 kilopascals. Notice that I'm keeping the correct and the same number of significant figures that I had previously because my unit conversions of pressures are an infinite number of significant figures. Okay, then cylinder C, 2.67 bar, I got 101.325 kilopascals and 1.013 bar, that converts to 267 kilopascals. Notice that with significant figures, it is actually the same number in kilopascals as in bar because it's so very close. Okay, so I've maintained the number of significant figures that I had previously. The 101.325, the 760 millimeters of mercury, the one atmosphere, the 101.325 kilopascals, the 1.013 bar, those all have an infinite number of significant figures when you're doing unit conversions. So, cylinder A, cylinder B, cylinder C, I'm going to sum up all these numbers. I have the same set of units. So that's critical. In order to add up these numbers, I need the same set of units. They're all in kilopascals. I'm going to add them all up. I'm going to get 435.3 kilopascals. Then I'm going to round this to the number, the fewest number of decimal places. And I got 43.3. I got the 125. I got the 267. So the 125 and the 267 both have the fewest number of decimal places. That is, they are both in the least precision um, category. The 43.3 has one more unit of precision in the tenth place. So I'm going to have to round this 435.3 and have it only significant in the or significant uh, in the ones column. And now that's 435 kilopascals is in cylinder X, and that is the total pressure of this system. Okay. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. We haven't yet done it, but we are going to do it in this unit. Another example with Dalton's Law using collecting a gas over water. Okay, so hold on for that one. Look for that key phrase over water, and that will get you there. Okay, that was another crazy hat video by the crazy hat chemist. I got a crazy hat that I'm wearing. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm going to see you next time. Bye now.